I want to look at problem three from the qualification round for Google Code Jam 2019, uh, which is a problem about, about primes. Um, I'm not going to upload a video of me solving the problem because it took me a while and there were a bunch of sort of dumb mistakes. I don't think that'll be very interesting, but I, I do want to explain this, the solution. Um, so they give you, they, they have, so what, what, was, what was the problem? Uh, they pick the string, uh, they pick um, 26 primes uh, corresponding to a through z, right? the smallest one's a, the biggest one's z, and so on. And then they uh, multiply together pairs of adjacent letters, and they give you those numbers, and you're supposed to recover the original string. Uh, and the primes can be absolutely enormous, in the big case, up to 10 to 100. So there's absolutely no hope of, of factoring the numbers. Um, so the key idea about for this problem is the GCD function, the greatest common divisor. And the point is that suppose that you uh, have the string ABC, then that gets encoded into uh, PA times PB and PB times PC, and the GCD Is just PB. So uh, this is how you can get the primes back out of the numbers, is if you find uh, two pairs of, uh, sorry, each, each number is a pair of letters. If you find two pairs of letters where one of them has a letter in common, then you can get out the prime for that letter. Uh, and that's, that's the key idea behind this problem. Um, and you'll always be able to find uh, some pair of three or three letters that are not all the same, right? So this would not work if we had ABA uh, because then we get the same thing twice, right? We just get PA times PB and PB times PA, which is the same thing because multiplication doesn't matter what order you go in. Uh, and so actually this problem would be impossible to solve if they were allowed to give you strings that only had two letters because if you have a string like ABA, there's no way to tell uh, if it's ABA or BAB, you get the same set of, of characters back. But uh, the problem statement guarantees that every string actually has all of the letters. So that means that we're definitely going to be able to find uh, three letters in a row that where the first one's not, not the same as the last one. Um, so once we do that, we can find out what that prime is. Um, and once we do that, uh, well, we're, we're, we're sort of halfway done. So let's look at the details. Um, so sort of the first thing that we should try and do is just generate the list of the primes that we want. Uh, and then we can decode after that. Uh, so we talked about this GCD idea. Um, I'm just going to sort of brute force it. Uh, so what is all the information that we can recover from this input? Uh, well, we can take the GCD of all of the possible pairs, and then if we get something that's not trivial, that is, that's not one or one of the original numbers, then we found one of the primes. Uh, so if we found one of the primes, then we can add that to a list of primes, and we can also add, um, right, once we know one of the primes, we can just divide... Uh, So AI over G is also fine, right? because each, each number is the product of two primes, and we know in this case that one of them is G. Uh, so we get actually three primes out of this. We get G, and we get the first number divided by G, and the second number divided by G. Uh, okay, so this uh, is sort of guaranteed. Right, so why do we recover all of the primes this way? Um, why is that true? So suppose we have some pair of letters, A, B. Uh, then we know that B, well, either A or B eventually has to get paired to something else off to the right that's different. Um, and so this pair, if we try it with all possible pairs, we're eventually going to get the, either A or B out as the GCD, and therefore we can recover both A and B. 
And that's true for all possible. I mean, that's true for all the, the adjacent pairs of adjacent letters. So that's that's why we're guaranteed to get all the primes. Uh, so why is it true that A and A B must be eventually paired with something different? Well, you know, there must be some third letter here eventually, right? We can keep going with a bunch of A's and B's, but eventually, because we have every letter, there has to be some other letter here. And now this AC is going to uh, help us recover right, all these other primes. Okay, so this is why we're guaranteed to get all the primes. Okay, so what do we do once we know all the primes? Well, let's make a list of them and sort them. Uh, and now, um, we're again going to use the fact that we get an ABC somewhere in the string. Uh, so that is, three letters where the first and the third one are not the same. Uh, so we're just going to go through the string and uh, compare the GCDs of each two adjacent numbers. Uh, and once we find a non-trivial GCD, right, we have some ABC and uh, we have that P is P. Okay, so now we can find that PA is just uh, AI. AI is PA times PB, and AI plus 1 is PB times PC. Okay, uh, so now we can recover. Now we know what P, uh, sorry, we found like the prime for the middle thing. Now we can recover the primes for the outer two. Uh, and we can just, now that we know the primes, right, we can just search in the list for that prime. So that's what this find function does, is given a prime, it just goes through a list of primes and returns uh, the index, or actually the corresponding character uh, for that prime. Um, right. So, we, we're going to build up the, uh, the string. So at this, this is the, uh, the B index. Right, so that is corresponds to G. And then now we can just work backwards, right? Because now we know uh, what A is, right? Now we know, yeah, now we know we can identify A because uh, it's just its prime is just ai over g. Uh, and so we can find the corresponding character. And then whatever the character is before a, uh, that number is going to be pa times that character. And now we now that we know pa, um, we can just divide the number, right? So we can just we can just work, work backwards. Um, So every time through this loop, like we have, we know this, right? We know what the number on the right is, so we can figure out what the number on the left is, uh, and then that number on the left becomes the new number on the right as we just step back to the string. So we can fill in those characters, and similarly, we can fill in the forward characters, right? In this case, we know what the number in the, on the left is, uh, and so we can figure out what the number on the right is, just by dividing. Uh, we can fill in that character, and now that's the new number on the left as we advance rightward through the string. Uh, so once we find three characters that are not all the same, um, then we can just go backwards and forwards from there and figure out the string. Uh, so that's how you do problem C.